Today we're going to look at what is going to happen if we're constrained by more than one inequality. Let's say x has to be less than 3 and x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Um, on the number set or on the number line this would look like this. We have x is less than 3 and greater than or equal to negative 2, meaning it includes negative 2, does not include negative 3. So we would shade less than 3 all the way to the left until it's ne negative 2 because it has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So it would look something like this. Solution set written as x such that negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is also, sorry, less than uh, 3. Notice we write it like this because x is in between negative 2 and 3. does not include 3. Let's look at the example. Negative 5 is less than x minus 4, which is also less than 2. And we want to solve for x. So we know that negative 5 has to be less than x minus 4, and x minus 4 has to be less than 2, because it lies between those two numbers. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. We get negative 1 is less than x, and on this side we're going to add 4 to both sides. We get x is less than 6. So we're basically saying x is greater than negative 1, but x is less than 6. So on a number line, of course, it would look like negative 1 here, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. x is less than 6, but greater than negative 1, so we'll shade in between as a solution set, since x is in between negative 1 and 6, we can write x such that negative 1 is less than x, which is also less than 6. Let's say we have um, two possibilities uh, that aren't necessarily in between two numbers, but let's say you can't be in between a certain set of numbers. So. Let's look at an example. Negative 3h plus 4 is less than 19, or um, 7h minus 3 is greater than 18. So again, we're just going to solve these separately. Let's subtract 4 from both sides. We get negative 3h is less than 15. Let's add 3 to both sides over here. We get 7h is greater than 21. We'll divide by negative 3. Remember, that means we got to switch our sign. h is greater than negative 5. On this side, we divide by 7. We get h is greater than 3. So on a number line, we see we have negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, h is greater than negative 5, h is also greater than 3, so we're just going to go ahead and graph h is greater than 3. h also could be greater than negative 5, so that actually covers 3 along with it. So my solution set basically based on that graph becomes h such that h is greater than negative 5. It's not needed to say it's greater than 3 because if it's greater than negative 5, we also assume it's greater than 3. So let's say that um, there's a dangerous spot in the air where an airplane shouldn't fly because there's too much turbulence. Uh, let's say this danger zone is in between um, 33,000 feet and uh, 20, 
6,000 feet. Now, the plane's altitude should stay either above 33,000 feet or below 26,000 to avoid that turbulent zone. So how we would graph this is we would show, um, let's say 26,000 here, 27,000, 28,000, all the way up to 33,000. A is greater than 33,000, or A is less than 26,000. Notice how your arrows, when you have an OR statement like that, they point in opposite directions. So we could write that something like A such that A is less than 26,000. Um, United or un, uh, in union with the graph of A is greater than 33,000. Um, when we're connecting two graphs that aren't connected, we use this little U symbol to represent union. Um, so that's going to conclude our uh, compound inequalities lesson.